Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, any other kind of thoughts uh, after rewatching the tape from from Nebraska, um, kind of about uh, just the, the game and kind of kind of what went wrong? Well, if you watched the same game I did. The turnovers was the biggest problem. I mean, we we had twenty seven points off of turnovers, and it's going to be hard to beat anybody doing that. We hadn't done that a lot since I've been here, but that was quite a few and. We was kind of out of sync. I think, you know, X coming back, you know, trying to fit him back in there. Uh, you know, he was kind of out of out of out of rhythm in terms of throwing the ball over the, all over the gym. He had about four himself. Um, so these are things that's got to be corrected. You know, we can't play anybody in the Big Ten and give up twenty seven points on on turnovers. That's tough to, to overcome. Alex and Tom Brew. Thanks for that, Tom. Appreciate it. I'm just curious on the three-point defense. I know some of it obviously is guys making tough shots, but is there anything you can do differently to make teams more uncomfortable maybe from, from getting shots on the perimeter and defensively, or is that just kind of a something you live with giving up some threes? Well, we ain't trying to give up anything. I mean, the threes that they made, they made – you know, I thought half of them were some tough ones. The little guard – he made, I mean, he made about three of them that were really deep, deep threes. I recall the one where Malik switched out and then Malik left him and he just pulled pulled up uh, and made it. Um, I mean, we're playing teams that are making, you know, making threes. And, you know, we just got to, we got to do a better job. And when we up and touching and, and making players fill us a little bit, we're pretty good in guarding the three-point line, but when we're late on switches and and not really communicating, because that's been a big problem with this team this season, um, we're getting burned on three. So we just got to keep working through it um, and and being a lot tougher than our opponent in, in terms of trying to take threes away because it has been a problem for us this season. Like Tom and Seth. Yeah, I could just to kind of follow up with that a little bit further. One of the things in kind of rewatching the last four games, so you know, forty-eight uh, threes given up in the last four games, it seems like there's a lot like the the weak side guys that kind of like drift into the lane um, when the ball gets reversed or having a hard time getting back to the corner or back to the wings. Is that just uh, execution thing, or is it more philosophical where they're just maybe just drifting too far away from their shooters, or do they they need to stay more engaged with those shooters on the weak side? Well, it's a number of guys that are doing this, mainly our younger guys, um, in terms of being in to get out. And, you know, the last two years here, we had some veteran guys that were pretty good at doing that. And we just got to keep working with them. You know, I mean, we know it works. Um, and it's been a struggle this year because guys are not catching on quickly as I thought they would, but hey, the only way you get through it is you got to keep working and hopefully something clicks and and then we're back to defending the three and you know we we defend the two pretty well, but the three's kind of been out of whack. You know, it's not been the same as it's been the last two years. So we got to just keep working at it. Seth the Mason. Mike getting X back uh the other night just how difficult was the last you know month plus of rehab for him? Obviously, he went through that whole injury last year, and I'm sure there was kind of some extra frustration. Could that maybe have helped him at all to just kind of know, you know, this is what rehab is going to look like, and this is what what I need to do? Just what's the last month been like for him getting back to the court? Well, it's been tough. I mean, you know, Xavier hadn't really played much basketball. You know, when you go back to last season and – Missing the seven games I think he missed this season so far. It's mentally has been tough on him. And, you know, we sit and watch him play a few days. He got a chance to practice. And, you know, the speed is still there, but the conditioning and and just the game, game play, you know, that you would play every day when you're in practice, it's just not there. So, you know, I – you know, I, I went into the game the other night knowing that he wasn't going to play a lot of minutes because we couldn't play him a lot of minutes, hadn't played much in practice. 
And he wasn't real happy about that. He only played 14, I think, minutes, but it was an awful 14 minutes. And, you know, I, I kind of shared that with him yesterday. I mean, because, he, hey, he was trying to do too much in the short period of time that he played, and he just got to let it come to him and relax and play. Mason, that Todd. Coach, thanks for your time. I, I'm curious. I know a lot of different coaches have different philosophies about this kind of stuff, but when you have a game and kind of a quick turnaround like this, how much of your time during practice is spent on self-scout and correcting mistakes from the previous game versus trying to prepare for another opponent? That game won't ever go unnoticed. Every game we we play, win or lose, you learn from it. And, you know, we spend a lot of time watching – the Nebraska game, because uh, that's how it should be. You just can't overlook it. You know, it was a good ass whooping. And you try to correct the things that you can correct, and then you go out on the floor and you, you go to work and get ready for the next opponent and try to clean up the things that happened in the game that you didn't play to particularly well. Todd and Jack. Hey, Mike. Um, Malik Renu, no matter what measure you use to measure it, has been uh, vastly improved as a passer this year um, as assist totals are way up. He's always probably had that in him. What did you you guys do to develop that part of his game to play at this, to, to be effective at this level? And also, uh, how does he kind of calibrate, you know, pass first, score first? I know the defense probably dictates a lot of that, but how does that kind of uh, work for Malik? Well, I think it, you watched him last season, being a freshman, you could see signs of it. He just couldn't stay on the floor because defensively, you know, he wasn't moving his feet or he grabbed someone and on a cut or, you know, he pick up senseless fouls and, and wouldn't allow him to play. And I thought this summer he spent a lot of time in Bloomington, you know, working on his body and, his game and um, because all the the fundamental tools are there for for Malik. I mean, we knew that when we, we was lucky to get him, you know, on the back end of his recruiting uh, trail. Um, and he's grown, man. I mean, you're starting to see some of that now. And a lot of it is because he's mentally – a, a little more mature than he was a year ago. And he's trying to, he's figured out how to stay on the floor somewhat this year versus sitting next to us over there on the bench. And, uh, and in doing that, you know, he's, he's doing a lot of good things for us on the basketball floor, which is kind of nice to see. Jack and Daniel. Yeah, Mike, with, with the uh, turnovers from the Nebraska game and, and even some of the previous games, what's kind of been your message to the team and, and maybe the focus in practice to try to um, eliminate some of those? Well, we've never really been a big turnover team since I've been here. And, you know, when you have games like that, you know, your antennas has got to go up because you're not going to beat anybody in the Big Ten turning it over like that. And... um you know, guys don't go out to just turn it over. I just thought, you know, I thought the game early on was back and forth, but we had no defensive presence because they were scoring pretty easily, I thought. And we were too. Uh, and then, you know, our aggressiveness to try to score put us in a lot of bad positions. I mean, it ain't like we hadn't played teams that put two on the ball Uh Normally we've been pretty good in that area in terms of getting the ball out of there and that next guy making the play. But, hell, we were throwing the ball all over the gym. We didn't give ourselves a chance. All right, Daniel, then we'll wrap with Mike Schumann. Yeah, Coach, um, on the topic of rotations, uh, it seemed like Leo was kind of ahead of CJ, um, at least in Lincoln. Is that something that was more the way that Nebraska plays or is that something that you feel like may continue moving forward? Don't know. That could change. Anything can change with our ball club. I just thought the last week and a half, Anthony had really been playing well and it showed on the floor um, in our last ball, last few ball games. And, um, you know, it, 
I base a lot of things on practice. You know, if I feel like you're not giving it to me, um, and I've tried guys, everybody's had an opportunity to play. Uh, but I just think now coming down the stretch, you know, I might shorten the rotation. You know, it's just all it's all about feel and based on who's doing what. Um, but it starts in practice. If I feel like you're not, you know, practicing and working your hard, working hard to deserve playing time, then you won't play. Mike, last one. Yeah. Hey, coach. Um, when, when you first took this job, you talked a lot about kind of on the ball defense being kind of the foundation and, and um, you know, really being important to your program. How do you how do you assess what you're getting on the ball this year and how how is that impacting maybe the, the three point shooting that you're seeing against you? It's, we've struggled in that area. You know, Gabe has really been the only one on ball defense has been really good for us, I think. You know, not having X out there because we considered him, you know, the last two years kind of the head of the snake in terms of initiating our defense on, up front. Uh, but I'm not getting it in the wing area right now. And, you know, and that's pivotal in college basketball. The, you know, the twos and the threes are guys that make basketball plays. And, and we haven't been really good in that area. And that's something that we really try to work on. Um, uh, but we got to get better. You know, I mean, you know, it was obvious, you know, in, in the game the other night, their guard play was much better than our guard play. And that can't be. And, uh, you know, we haven't had very many games like that. But the big games, we've got outplayed out front in the guard spot. And that's that's something that's got to change. We've got to keep working, try to not let that happen. All right. Thanks, Coach.